Hey family, welcome to the Love You More show. And uh, do me a favor, hit that little notification bell, okay? Make sure that you click that on to make sure that you never miss an episode. And of course, make sure throughout the show, you like, share, and you comment. I do hope you enjoy this show and um, I'm looking forward to it. It's coming up next, flat out. Next on the Love You More show. I've been doing this for 25 years because every couple can handle a couple of disagreements. But when those disagreements get to a critical point, it's like plaque to a tooth, it's just gone. How important is spontaneity in a relationship if you really want to keep the intimacy going? According to the research, 90 days. Every 90 days, our erotic fantasies change. So you telling me every 90 days, somebody has to think of something. Mm -hmm. So for us, we don't look at ourselves as this perfect couple. We look at ourselves as a couple that makes perfect adjustments. Oh. You better off by yourself with the argument. Love you more. Hey family, Willie Mo Jr. here and welcome to another amazing Love You More show. Shout out to everybody who watched last month. The numbers done went back to where they're supposed to. But listen, if you're new to the show, it is my honor to have you. But of course, I don't want you to be a creep. You say, Willie Mo Jr., what's a creep? That means you just sitting up here watching, but you're not really uh, bought in. Come on, somebody. You say, Willie, how can I buy in? It's so easy. It's free. All you got to do is subscribe. I also want to challenge you to make sure that you share this with as many people as possible. And uh, throughout this conversation make sure that you leave in comments i read every single comment good or bad and i would do my best to answer as many of your comments as possible family today of course you know love is in the air many of you all know that throughout this year um it's all about loving yourself more if you're new to the show here's the thing the bible declares this that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves but it's just so unfortunate sometimes that we can't love each other because we haven't taken the time to love ourselves. I hear ladies all the time saying, Willie, listen, I lost myself when I had children. I lost myself when I got married. And you know, black women cry, white women sob. That's what they do, <laughs> right? And so here's the thing. Here's a beautiful opportunity for you to learn more about how to love yourself, right? Today is a huge day. Today I get the opportunity to hang out with one of the people who walked with me the final year of my divorce process. I'm just dropping the fourth wall. And if it wasn't for him being by my side throughout this process, there were some days that I didn't think that I could get up. He is a trained and licensed psychologist, uh, a relationship specialist that you've seen on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. You've had the opportunity to see him on Porsche. He sit on couches with people like David Mann and Israel Holton and Kurt Franklin. He's a name that you're going to have to know in this space. The one and only Dr. Aldewan Tart. What's going on, champ? Hey, man, you made me feel good with that intro. Man, I'm as you to should. Introduce, you know, my wife like that when I come home. <laughs> You know who coming in the house? <laughs> He's coming home. <laughs> how's the wife doing though, man? You know, new, new. Well, I mean, Christian's not a, a new baby anymore. But oh, how's man, that he with a full new child? Grown too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's it though. Well, I'm so thankful that I get the opportunity to have you here, and you know, it's a time for us to really loosen up and really get into what love looks like. Because for some people, when it's, when we say, listen, we're going to sit down with a psychologist, they're like, oh, hell no, ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to make sure that we gave everybody on the other side of the camera who's not taking therapy serious, mm -hmm. seriously, counseling seriously, still with the old mentality that I can take it right to the altar. Of course, God is going to fix it. I believe in Jesus and therapy and counseling. And that's why I have you here today. On the Love You More show, we have an icebreaker uh, with music. Okay. And so today, I want you to check out a music video and a scenario that's going to open, uh, that's going to break the ice for our conversation today. It's called Love in the Daytime. Check okay. this out. Okay. Why are we waiting for the sun? Make you feel like a queen when we in between 
between them sheets And keep you energized like some Zantrax 3, baby Why are we waiting for the sun to go down? We both want it, so let's get it started right now Time's of the essence, man, I don't wanna waste mine We should get together and make love in the daytime Love in the daytime is the name of the record and Dr. Tart, just coming out of that song, as you've seen, like, I think sometimes we get into this routine and it really takes the spice out of a relationship. How important is spontaneity in a relationship if you really want to keep the intimacy going? I mean, uh, according to the research, 90 days, every 90 days, our erotic fantasies change. Every 90 days. Every 90 days, people get bored. Every oh. 90 days. So you, anything you do, becomes mundane. So we're talking about couples keeping it together, right? Every mm -hmm. 90 days. People say like, you know what? Uh, how do married people stay together and have happy sex lives? Mm. They're switching it up every three months. Every three months. Every three months. So sometimes it's spontaneity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's playing. Sometimes it's, uh, it's quick. Sometimes it's long. Sometimes you initiate. Sometimes the other person initiates. Sometimes, mm. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be PG about this. Sometimes uh, one person is satisfied. Sometimes both people are satisfied. The only thing that matters is that there's variety and that you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Right. Because that's that desire and that's that eroticism and that's that uh, just this newness uh -huh. that couples have. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's not like that, it's, it's, it's not fun. So you telling me every 90 days somebody has to think of something. You've been married now for um, what, eight years now? No, it's about 10. It's almost 10. Mm -hmm. So you've been married for 10, 10 yeah. years. Here's the thing, brother, I don't want to know what you do in your bedroom. <laughs> That's your business. But could you give, like, from a male point of view, what are yeah. some of the strategies that you may have heard about because yeah. you sit on the couch with many people yeah. that help bring the spice back into life because it's just becoming my day? All right. Well, well, one, my wife would say, you know, love making to her starts early in the day, like how I treat her in the morning. I treated her two days ago, uh, doing things to make sure that she's in a good space, uh, how I look at her, you know? Mm -hmm. And then there are other times in which it's just, it's just a look. It's just time. The kids are gone or maybe the kids are asleep, yeah. you know, not knowing what's going to happen, yeah. right? But, but one of the things that, that I've noticed is that when I don't overwhelm my wife with things that take her out of her sexiness, uh -huh. So she's overburdened with chores and taking care of the kids and working. And then it, 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 in the middle of the night, I'm like, hey, what's up? That's <laughs> difficult. Versus me saying, hey, you know what? Uh, babysitter. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go out to dinner. Or uh, let's go someplace. Let's, I, I love to go someplace like on a, on a weekend. She don't know what I have planned for Valentine's Day. I got something, got something tough. Tough and heavy. It's happening. Right? Tough and heavy. Yeah. So we just, we just, but I also ask, well, you want to be honest. Yeah. I ask my wife a question that a lot of guys may not ask. Yeah. Hey, uh, how was that? Is there anything that could be different? Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and she'll tell what, me. What, what, what if she, she just like, are you lacking in this, this, this? You got to have hey, some no, She can't skin. say it that way. I'm always an eight. Now, What's the I right always approach? ask her between an eight and a 10. How was Numbers. that? Numbers. Eight, eight, eight and a 10, right? Okay. So, so it might be, she might say, hey, you know, you could focus on this a little more. Or I really like when you did X, Y, and Z. Or one of the things I like is boom, 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 boom. And a lot of times it's like you have boom, to have boom, 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 baby. My bad, my bad, <laughs> my bad, my bad. You know what I'm saying? No, I get it. I but, get it. But as I'm learning her, because here's the reality: your your wife, your woman, is not the same mm. every single time you're with her. She wants different things. She's exploring. She's doing different things. So we actually sit down and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And a lot of couples don't have that conversation. Black folks don't have that conversation. Yeah. But I can tr trust me. What you're thinking and not doing is already running through your mind. So why not communicate it on a regular basis? There's a little questionnaires and all these different things that you can do yeah. to be able to have conversation, to keep things fresh and engaging and fun. Now, listen, hanging out with Dr. Aldewan Tart, if you just tuning in and you caught it on the premiere, make sure that you share, like, subscribe, comment, do all of that, because this is a deep conversation and we just hitting the surface. Dr. Tart, I got to ask you this because I always hear from the male perspective on what they're doing for their woman, right? Yeah. You know, me and we get down and we talk, talk about it, but we don't necessarily talk about it to each other. We talk about what our woman ain't doing. Like, bro, I wish she would do a little bit of this, 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 and this. Because it seems like it's a lot easier for, for them to tell us, you know, hey, you can do better in this area. But what do you, how do, what's the approach to bring it to the woman? Like, 
hey, I ain't really dig that without, you know, making them feel so uncomfortable because I realize that they're the weaker vessel, as the Bible says. Yeah, you know, a lot of them want to have that conversation. They want to have that conversation because they're, they're, they're worried about emasculating us. Like, how do you tell your man that you want to do something different yeah. without him getting offended? Yeah. So you just had a conversation. You had a conversation yeah. and, and, and say, hey, babe, you know what I was thinking? You see that scene right there? I like that scene right there. Let me oh, tell you a funny okay. story. So I come home one time, right? And I walk in the door and I say, hey, babe, uh, Megan doesn't say anything. I say, hey, babe, she don't say anything. Well, I don't really pay attention to it. Then I say, babe, and then I look at the screen and she's watching Power, mm -hmm. right? And it's a love scene in, in, with Power with Ghost, on right? The window. Here's, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> Not that I've seen the show. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, I went to school with Omari Hartwick. We, we oh, played man, football together. So I'm looking at it. I was like, man, no, it's a TV show. Don't get offended. Don't get upset, right? Yeah. I go upstairs, but I'm getting upset, right? <laughs> 40 minutes later, she doesn't come up like three minutes later. She doesn't pause and say, hey, baby, how was it? 40 minutes later, she comes up. She's like, hey, how you doing? I said, ask Ghost, uh, a.k.a. Omari. And went to wow. Southwest High School, go ahead, ask him. And she's like, babe, baby, I know you're not tripping. I said, I said, no, nah, it was 40 minutes. You sat there and watched Love Scene <laughs> and ignored me on TV, right? Yeah. And she says, you, you really want to know what's going on? I said, what? Well, she says, I don't like Omari, even I'm sure she does. Right. Yeah. Uh, I like the scene. I said, uh, OK, run that back. Run that. What's yeah. the scene? Do, yeah. I, do, I, do I need to put some uh, baking soda on the back of your <laughs> back? Do, do I, I need to put do a, I need to get, get some fake what, tattoos what, what, on what, my what do I need to do? Yeah. Do I need to come, come, come in and throw some out on the floor? <laughs> but uh, what she was saying was that I was turned on by that scene and I liked it. And we had those conversations. Yeah. And when you open up the conversations, to where it's not like a, hey, let's sit down and talk about our love life, yeah. right? Versus, hey, you know what I like to do? Like, what What you thinking? Like, yeah. for real? Why? Like, how does that work? Are you sure? I don't know about that. Why would you want to do that? When you're able to have an open conversation like that, it makes things just just easier. No, I want to know. what I don't want, I don't want, it's probably too much of a, I don't want it just to be there thinking about something else. Yeah, that's real. You know what I'm saying? That's real. And, I, and she doesn't want the same thing for me. So let's just have a conversation and, and, and you know, explore things together. Dr. Tart, porn in marriage or no? I almost say no. That's a hard no. Yeah. Here's why. And it's not because I'm, 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 I'm self-righteous, right? Yeah. Here's what happens when people do it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you, so at first, people are like looking at this. They're like, whatever. Bump this doctor. He don't know what he's talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So you watch it. And then the porn actually increases your... Um, your libido and your desire, right? Like, oh, this is great, right? It added something, all right? But when you go back to regular sex, just the two of you, mm -hmm. you begin to miss the porn, mm -hmm. right? And then what happens is usually it's a gateway for one or both of you will watch the porn when the other person is not around, mm -hmm. all right? And if they are happy, if you know what I mean, you miss an opportunity to make one another happy. And mm -hmm. so what happens is like when you over rely on porn, mm -hmm. toys, or anything outside of your relationship, what it does is it takes down the sensitivity and the desire mm -hmm. when you're making love. It feels like it's boring now because yeah. you added something to it. And that's the unintended effect that a lot of couples uh, struggle with. Yeah. You know, I hang around a lot of men. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, like, I don't know why the Lord just been sending me dudes everywhere. And, you know, it's not my thing, you know. Um, but a lot of men are really subscribing to this new poly life, this new, like, I got to have three in the bit, like, what what does that lead to? Like, a lot of times, just mm -hmm. like cigarettes, my daddy was told to smoke when he was eight years old, mm -hmm. right? Because it would help his sinuses or what have you, but they didn't know the long-lasting effects of what cigarettes could be back in the early 1940s, mm -hmm. right? So, like, what are the long-term effects of having multiple partners in the bedroom in a marriage? All right. You mean, like, they all agree to it? Like, everybody agree to it. Yeah, the yeah, wife's this... like, hey, it don't. I, you can bring your friend. For black folks, it rarely works. Now, there are small subset communities where it works, but they're different. They have a different mindset where nothing belongs to them. My car doesn't belong to me. My body doesn't belong to me. We're all free, yeah. right? But the other people that experiment, they come into counseling later because here's what happens. Um, so they go ahead and explore this because they're influenced by social media. They're in inspired by the world. They think this is mm -hmm. going to be great, right? Yeah. But then they go out, and here's where they get caught up. They start catching feelings. Right. With the other person. With the other person. Okay. Right. And so your 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 husband or your wife, all right, your first husband or wife, however you want to put it, right? Yeah. They start getting jealous that you actually care about this person, right? You're celebrating their birthday. You're there when their son needs something. Um, their mother gets sick. Um, you you because the, the more you're with them, you're starting to develop an emotional attachment 
Mm -hmm. Right. And then what happens is most people can't handle the jealousy. Right. Mm -hmm. So you may be making love, but the other person doesn't feel like it. First thing comes to your mind is what? Were you with the other person? Mm -hmm. Did you do this with him? Did you do this with her? The phone rings y'all in the middle of a conversation. Like, who is that? Most people cannot handle that. They're too possessive of their partner. It sounds good in the movie. And then when you actually play it out in real life, a lot of jealousy. And then you're managing two or three people's emotions, birthdays, needs, and want. It's hard enough to do that with one person. So people that usually do it, they were like, yeah, it was good for the movie. But in real life, that was was too much. And they end up ruining the main thing, just looking for a spark. So as a psychologist, I know you see many different stories as it pertains to relationships. Cheating is is something that happens in relationships. Mm -hmm. Some people believe that it can be repairable. Others believe that it can't. Have you ever had a case where a person married her side man or her side, or he married the side chick and it actually worked out? Or does it work out or doesn't it work out? Talk to me about that. It's very rare. It's Mm -hmm. very rare. What you're doing is you're replacing a a house with a a window, Mm -hmm. right? So a lot of times you they they may add something someone on the side to supplement uh, what they're not getting at home. Or right, home could be great more times than not. They just have opportunity and temptation, mm-hmm. right? And so at the time it feels like, hey, I have you know I have my cake and eat it too. Mm-hmm. But when you remove the house and they're left with the window, no. Just think about think about the dynamics of that. Let's be practical. I have the opportunity to sit down with people and be practical. You think the kids gonna buy? With the man or woman that broke you broke broke up my mom and dad, that's gonna be a difficult situation. Mm-hmm. You think the friends and family are gonna bond and come around? This is the person that 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 broke this apart, all right. And then you start. So before they were just the window dressing. So you have a broken window in your house, mm-hmm. and then when you left with just a broken window, <laughs> it yeah. doesn't compare to the house, right. which is why, especially men, when they cheat, they tend to cheat down, mm. right? They're not looking to replace their wife. Yeah. They, the wife is the wife. So when you start talking about leaving for the other partner, rarely does it work. What if, what if, what, and then the other what person's parent know it. <laughs> some, people, some people do, but it's rare. Okay. It's rare because now you have two wives. Now you have two husbands. Now you have a conflict. Yeah. You have a conflict. And so for a lot of people, um, it, they usually talk about it afterwards. Yeah. And so, for couples who do, it's called infidelity recovery. Yeah. Believe it or not, you know they have higher marital satisfaction than couples that don't go through it. More Love You More podcast after this. Hey, family, thank you so much for enjoying this episode. Do me a favor. Why don't you like, subscribe, and leave a comment? Uh, major love to my Patreon community. I love you guys so much. If you want to be a part of the Love You More producers, you're more than welcome. All you got to do is click the link in the description here on YouTube. Uh, But I got a question from one of my Patreon members and she said, Willie Moore Jr., I am fighting for my marriage and sticking beside my husband after infidelity. Can you ask Dr. Tart some practical steps towards trusting again? Sure I can, I got you, it's coming up next. If you would like to ask questions to our guests, all you have to do is join our community, become a Love You More producer. And you better do it fast, because I don't know how many producers I'm gonna have. Okay, so click the link in the description and become a part of our community. Love you more, produce. The question will be answered right after this. Love you more. So how do you regain trust in a relationship that's been broken down or, or through betrayal or cheating yeah. or what have you? Like, what's that process like? I mean, so first of all, it's a three-step process. So atone. So the first one is you have to atone for what you did. Okay. So you have to like be be naked and unashamed about what happened mm-hmm. because the other partner is traumatized because it's not just the act. They don't know who you are. Yeah. Just think about it. Usually there's there. It's not the actual act that gets people. It's the cover up and the betrayal. Mm-hmm. So you came home and you kissed me and we had Easter dinner like everything was cool mm-hmm. and you were out doing this. You led mm-hmm. me to believe that we were cool. You didn't come home and say, hey, I'm dissatisfied. I'm upset. I'm angry. Hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing, yeah. right? So the first thing is to atone to the level of what you did. And that's when you open up and tell everything, yeah. right? Because that's what helps the other person be less traumatized because they don't have to guess. They don't have to catch you in a lie, right? The second thing is that you have to attune. So our first marriage is dead. Our first relationship is gone. Mm-hmm. That thing is gone. That thing is right? gone. Don't, we don't trust it. Neither one of us trust. We thought it was something, and it's obviously not what we thought it was. Mm-hmm. So then you have to tune into the person again to figure out, well, why did that happen? Who are you? Uh, who are we? 
uh, and, and be able to trust that person again. And then you attach. So atone, attune, but this usually takes about a year. So let me figure out why you did that. So when you came home and you kissed me and then you were with him or her the next day, was that you just playing me? Or did the temptation come? Did you feel guilty? Yeah. Were you upset? I needed to tune in to figure out what's going on with you. Were you jealous? Were you upset? Is this an addiction? Let me get it so that I understand what I'm dealing with so that we can put some things in place so this doesn't happen again. So it is, you, you can repair and trust can be repaired. It, ha it happens all the time now. Yeah. As you can imagine, Willie, it's very difficult work. Yeah. But the biggest mistake that I see, and this is mostly men, mm -hmm. is that they don't open up and tell all the details. And I can get why they don't do that. Yeah. But every woman watching this, they already know 75% of what's happened. Yeah. And they're trying to see, can I trust you to open up and give me some reason as to why this happened so I can decide whether I want to move forward or break up? Why don't men open up? You think you know how hard that is? I mean, it was hard. But like, when, like for me, like once the cards are on the table, it's like, mm -hmm. hell, you sure? Cool. Let's run the play. You right? Like, so why mm -hmm. do you think there's something in us? Like that says, hey, I can't just keep it real when it's already broken down. I'm be like, the ship, the ship already done, done sunk. So let's build a new one on true, on true, on true. Yeah, I mean, uh, because you're thinking about the future, you're thinking about repair. But it's very. Why don't people in court say guilty? <laughs> Everybody say not guilty, right? Yeah. To see, can I get through this? But I also think that they're not trying to hurt their partner. They feel like I already did this. Do you really want to know the details? That's going to hurt your feelings. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to make amends. But is this in your best interest for me to tell you I've been with this woman 12 times, mm -hmm. two times in the morning, one time, right? You came at three. She left at oh, 2.59. No, no, I ain't going Do there. Really? I'm just saying. But the woman already knows. And here's yeah. the thing. She's trying to understand what happened. She's trying to like, and I'm saying she, but it happens to men too. Right, right, of course. The, the, other, the, the betrayed partner is trying to figure out how did this happen and why did this happen? And help me get rhyme or reason so that I, so that I don't have to guess mm -hmm. if this is happening again. Because here's what happens to a traumatized person. They'll, they'll be, you have a conversation at 6, 9.30 at night, they'll step up and be like, hold up. When you went to the store and you said that it was, it was a, a long line, did you go see her? Because mm -hmm. you came home two hours later and now I'm, I'm just wondering, were you with them? Mm -hmm. So the other, because you haven't opened up and been totally transparent, now they're trying to trust you again. They're trying to figure out every time they were betrayed. And that's how people are not able to move forward. Mm. Right. And then you, then you lie. No, I was, uh, well, I was looking at it and I went and looked, there was no receipt from the grocery store that night. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's how people think. But can't that drive, like, I feel like that'll drive somebody crazy. Like, I know just as a man, if I'm continuously badgered about something, I'm like, hey, I told you that I'm not doing it no more. How long can a person still be badgered by it? And what's the process of, mm -hmm. is there a time on the trauma? Yeah. Like, when, how long we got to talk about this without being like that person yeah. who's being insensitive to what's really going on? Like, how do you work out a beautiful balance? Because three, four, five years later, I'm like, babe, we still can't be, like, I've apologized. I done went on with my life. Like, how do we do that? Is there a time limit? I mean, that's a great question. I mean, that's how traumatized the other person is. It's not mm -hmm. like they want to wake up and have trust issues. Mm -hmm. When they go to sleep, they're just traumatized. Like, I wonder what he or she is doing, mm -hmm. right? The phone can ring and someone flips the phone over, mm -hmm. right? And it just might, they want to pay attention to you. Or maybe there's someone texting you from a business standpoint or, you know, and it's not your business. Mm -hmm. When you flip that phone over, are you going to the bathroom? Are you go out of town? Or... We, we, uh, I asked to make love to you in the morning and you refuse me. All these things are trauma signals. All these things are triggers. They don't want to be triggered. They're trying to figure what this thing out. They don't, they don't, they don't like that at all. That's not fun to be, to be triggered. Right. I, I'll tell you a, a couple I had and, um, he went out of town and he talked about when he was out of town, he was just a different guy when he came to, he said, I don't know what it is about being out of town. I feel free. I feel open. Women come at me. And I just have time and opportunity. There's absolutely nothing wrong in our marriage. It's time and opportunity and people coming at me, right? right. And um, so we talked about transparency. And she called him. 11 o'clock, he picked up the phone. And she was like, are you with somebody? He was like, what? Said, no. She says, I'm just telling you that's what's on my mind right now. And I'm calling so I can put this to rest, right? Hangs up the phone. Four minutes later, she called him back. So are you with somebody? He said, you just called me. He was like, yeah, but you could have, 
you could have like hid her behind. Could you just walk around your your hotel just on FaceTime for me? I just need to see because remember when I would call you, ask you what you were doing, you like none of my business. I, I I'm just trying to go to sleep. Dang. Right? She, she called him an hour later. So I I was figuring that maybe, all right, maybe I know maybe maybe she hadn't come over yet. All right, but now that it's one o'clock in the morning, I just need to see. After the one o'clock call, she didn't feel the need to call because she had everything. seen. See, we're talking about trust. Trust is restored when you see that what you're thinking is not happening. It's called, it's called uh, behavior verification. It's called transparency. Behavior I therapy. see that you're not doing this anymore. I see with your location that you really are going to work to the gym and coming home. Mm-hmm. You're asking me to trust you on general principle. You're asking me to trust your word, which you deceive me with. That's not real. I need to have verification. And then over time, I don't want to make the call because you've helped me to repair. The damage has been repaired. And I see how you move is different from where you were. Ain't no such thing as trust me. I have to see. Yeah. Well, if I don't pay you, how many times is it going to take for you to trust me yeah. if I didn't pay you one time? Right. You're going to need to see that automatic draft. I say, I got you. I got you. You're going to send me a deposit. Real quick, though, real, real quick. quick. quick, quick. Yeah. I got you, man. Trip. And that was then. This is now. Yeah. No, nah, let me see it. It might take you a year to trust that I'm going to pay you before you say, no, nah, he's good. That's the damage when people are betrayed. Wow. So shifting gears just a little bit, you know, sometimes betrayal lands us in divorce court. And the relationship does not work. How do you trust after divorce? Like, how do you, how mm-hmm. long do you think a person should wait before they bring somebody else into that relational space? I know you go into this selfish season where it's just all about you and you just want to do whatever mm-hmm. you need to do, handle your business however you want to. Is there a certain time that you say this is a healthy, healthy time yeah. to redevelop who you are and you could bring somebody else into the fold? Yeah. It's, it's not like days and months are a set time because everyone's different, mm-hmm. but it's people who set a timetable to heal. So set the time. Yeah. So like I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let this hurt for six months, and then I'm gonna get back out there and date. Okay. I'm gonna give myself a year, and then I'm I'm gonna date again. And it's also how you think about the divorce. All right. So if you look at it and say, hey, this didn't happen with this person, you reframe it a certain way. You're able to move forward and say, well, with another person, maybe it can be better, mm-hmm. right? Like I'll use a celebrity example, right? So Sierra, it didn't work out with Future. All right. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to get married for whatever reason. All right. When she says, all right, let me find someone who's marriage minded. Right. Who wants the same thing as me. All right. I got with someone who's not marriage minded. Right. That's not what he wants to do. That has nothing to do with me. You see the distancing and that has something to do with our dynamic. Mm-hmm. So I can go have a better relationship with someone else if I pick someone who's in tune with me. It's not the fact that you're damaged goods are the people that you date, all women, all men yeah, hurt you. That blanket statement. Yeah, so, but you say, hey, this hurt, but you also have to reframe it. Yeah. Like, reframing is like, look, why is that, why, that, that, was that really happy in that relationship anyway? Yeah. Man, I'm not happy in that relationship. All right, what am I free to be right now? Man, I, I get to actually have a conversation with someone and it's 50-50. They don't have to get defensive. Yeah. I don't have to be, I, I don't have to get blessed out for just saying my feelings. Yeah. I don't have to have a conversation where I talk for two you talk for 18. I say my part and they walk away. Hold yeah. up. This, this, this wasn't healthy for me. That's fact. Right? And then, and then the best way to know that you're ready to date is to date. <laughs> People like they hesitate. Like, oh, I don't yeah. know if I'm ready. And you could be hesitating. It's a mind state. You yeah. know that with procrastination with business. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, no, you just got to go Let's out there started. and do it. If no one watched the video, all right, man, I might need to work on my lighting. Yeah. I might need to work on the time that I post, post the video. And so, when when I went on the date after a major breakup, right? Yeah. Uh, well, we weren't three minutes in uh, to the food being served, right? This, you know what set me off? What? Uh, back in the time I ate meat, right? I was yeah. I was eating a steak and I went to go put salt and pepper on it before I even tasted it. Yeah. And she says, "You're not gonna taste it before you put salt and pepper." I said, "I don't need you criticizing me." <laughs> and I went off so hard. Right. You know, Willie. You know how you go off so hard. Yeah, the other person looking at you like you're crazy. She's yeah. looking at me like I was. I'm not ready today. I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm <laughs> sorry. I thought I was ready. I thought I was ready. Too too free. I can't take no criticism about doing no meat yeah. or anything else. I'm sorry. It's over. All right. But over time, I was able to leave because you think you're ready. I'm able to leave that baggage and then be on a date with her. And, and not someone I broke up with. 
you so, know. So, Dr. Tar, you got a lot of singles who watch. Shout out to my singles out there. Listen, if you're single, married, or whatever you are, make sure that you subscribe, share, and leave a comment. If this conversation getting real good to you, share it with somebody else. We want to make sure that we keep that thing going because at the end of the day, knowledge is power, but it's only powerful when you share it. All right? So make sure you do that. Dr. Tar, singles watch this, this show all the time. They always asking me questions about being single. And I just want to talk about this soft life thing that's just going around on the internet. Okay. You know, and strong women who've had to pay their own bills, had to raise their own children, had to go out there and fend for themselves, live in the deficit until they couldn't, you know, until mm -hmm. they until they elevated. Now it's kind of this thing where they kind of have their guards up because they've done it by themselves for so long. Mm -hmm. And now it's this new opportunity to live off this soft life, but yet they still have a hard time getting their bills paid and doing all of this. What's that balance like? And is soft life the new solution for women who are single to get a, a, a high-powered, high-value man? Well, I mean, when you, when you look at the, where the economy is mm -hmm. and, and post-COVID, uh, a lot of people hurt men too. Mm -hmm. Right. We won't admit it, but men are dealing with that as well. Yeah. Right. So there are men that want soft life, too. Right. And we start talking about marriage. Uh, the well it, in aggregate, because single men always get upset when I say this mm -hmm. in aggregate, married men are wealthier than single men that do the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's because you have a partner to bounce things off of. You have a partner to be able to hold things down. You have a partner that allows you to be more aggressive. You can go in and then she can hold, hold, hold down the back end. I'll pray for you. They hands on you, connect you if you have a woman that's well connected, right? So many different things mm -hmm. um, that you can do. So men want that soft life too, mm -hmm. right? To, to be honest. Right. But when you start talking about what's interesting with women, even women who are high achievers, let's take an Oprah, right? If you take an Oprah Winfrey, yeah. she prefers a man who gives her the option to work. The sexiest man mm -hmm. is the one that gives the woman, that, even the one that makes six, seven, eight, nine figures, she wants the option to work the because option. of security. Yeah. She doesn't want the stress to have to produce. Men, we always wake up that way. We hardwired that way. But women don't like all that on them. And so that soft life, even two dudes coming in the same way, one provides enough where she has the option to work. She can tell her boss, I don't like the situation. I'm out. And the other one was like, I can't go nowhere. They're going to find another man sexier that gives them the option. That's just real. Yeah. That's just real. That's real. You know, Dr. Tart, you know, as you as you talk about that, you talk about your wife. Like, I want to kind of talk about your relationship. Okay. You guys are in the public eye. Yeah. You know, it went from, you know, just being online. Now couples, they go to Destin, Florida, and they really get the refining that they need in their relationship. Do you ever feel any of that pressure when you guys have day-to-day -day issues now that you have a band of women and men who are like hanging on to your every word. Do you feel a bigger responsibility? And if so, how do you all get through the tough times knowing that so many people are watching? I mean, yes and no. I mean, yes, we feel like, man, there's no couples out there going hard saying we, we rock with marriage, right? So we feel like this is what we signed up for. Mm -hmm. When we got there, this is what God's plan was. We met as underground matchmakers, nothing official. We just hook people up. And I decided to hook myself up when we're having a conversation. What about did you see in her that it was like, yo, this the one? Uh, uh, first of all, just looks. Let's be honest. She was fine. Right? Come she on. Was, let's was, just be fine. real, Doctor. She was fine. She was fine. Okay. When she walked in, uh, she was uh, fine. Um, the fact that she was cool, calm, collect, confidence. If I had to pick one, she was confidence. Mm. Uh, and, and I started thinking, I was like, this is how I want my daughters to be. This is who I want teaching uh, my future children. And she was just cool in the other side of the pillow. And she was also very interesting. She was high value. She was high value. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how many attractive women I go on a date with. And this, and this is where I, I want single women to understand. You know, so quote unquote, you think a high value man, right? You think he has all these options. No, they don't. Not for a wife. For right. eye candy, yes. Right. But for a wife, someone you want to spend time with? You can go five years and not find one person to fit that. So when a man sees that, he's going to seize that opportunity. So when she came in, I was like, and I was dating, Willie. Really. You dating somebody? I, no, I'm saying I was dating. I was dating different people. Oh, you had a few I, people. My, 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 um, my mindset is I'm going to keep dating until I find her. Because I, I don't, don't want to be single. <laughs> So if, if if that's not at 12 o'clock, if you give me another date at 2, I'm going to date at 2. I'll do a, the 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 2 in the morning, whatever, until I find her. 
she's out there somewhere. That's that's how my mindset is. And so when she came, I said, well, I ain't felt like this. Let me see what this opportunity is like. So that's what it was. How did you come to her and tell her that I think, you know, I think this could be something? Well, you know what? You know, this is interesting. All right. At that time, really, I was popping. You got her popping. Listen, listen. I had a show um, on BET called yeah. Mom, Myself, and I. It was Tashina Arnold, mm -hmm. Garcelle Bouvet, and me. I was a cheap talent, obviously, right? <laughs> right. I was obviously, and I was. I can't believe the Lord blessed me with this, right? right. So BET Awards is in Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. Red carpet. The second date, Willie, she comes over. I have a stylist at my house, yeah. a limo. It's how long ago this was. A limo Come outside. Through. I was like, this woman finna be on me. Yeah. She's finna be on me, right? We go, and you're laughing at me, but I felt I felt blessed to sit next to Chopper. Remember Chop yeah. Chopper sitting there for Chopper making stopped. the band. That's how old yeah. this was, right? We sitting there, right? We sitting next to Chopper. I was like, God put you in the nice places. Anyway, we come back, uh, come back to my crib. I go in to kiss her. She pulls back. And I was like, I know after this red carpet, uh, I'm the man. Uh, you walk the red carpet with me, right? And I don't even get a kiss. Man, well, I was I was I was offended. Not because I'm fast. I was like, this woman straight up don't like me. Yeah. She not impressed, right? Yeah. And so she goes up to the car and I come out there. This is my personality. I came out there and I was like, look, just be real. I I get it. I get it. If you don't like me, just say so. But don't just go along for the ride. And she says, I like you. I had a lot of fun. I'm really digging you, but I don't really open up like that. I don't really just kiss dudes on the second, third, or fourth date. My my body doesn't open up. I have to get to know you more. And I said, hey, that's all right. cool, girl. I don't even want to kiss no more. That's good. And I was also thinking she ain't kissing nobody else. Exactly. Look, if I didn't lay out all this, I know, yeah. I know, yeah, I know I you know no other that. dude. Yeah, and right? I'm on TV. And I was thinking, this is what I want my daughters to do. Praise God. And the fact that she was easy like Sunday morning and in control, I was like, this is where I want to be. Yeah. And, and so then I started putting on more pressure. I started saying, all right, let me take her to different restaurants. Uh, let me start. Uh, my, my wife told me she don't get mad that I said this. I said, what you, what you like to eat? She says, I like to eat a little bit of everything, but I don't, I don't eat meat, but I don't really do chain restaurants. I said, what that mean? She says, I don't, I don't do franchise restaurants. I said, like none of them? I said, you talking about like Wendy's, like Applebee's? She says, nah, I don't do Ruth Chris. I don't do, I said, I said definitely not cheese I said, that sound a little, right, right. I said, I said, that sound a little bougie. I'm gonna be honest, I said, that sound a little bougie to me, right? Yeah. And she says, not that. I'm a foodie. I just like new experiences. I didn't say how much it costs. I just don't want to go to something I've seen already. Wow. And I said, okay, say less. I got on the phone like, hey, you know any restaurants, non-chain? Willie, we went to every non-chain restaurant, right? Wow. We only went there. If, 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 if it's another restaurant, we didn't go there. And so what I appreciate about her is that she was able to say what she likes, but she was grounded at the same time. Yeah. She was like, I just like what I, I like. like. Mm -hmm. We can go to a, a food truck if it's not a friend. I just want to do new stuff right. and have fun. So more Love You More podcast after this. You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. If it's not a friend, I just want to do new stuff and right. have fun. So seeing how confident she was, I like that. Dr. Tart, you're talking about some heavy, real conversation right now. What do you say to the woman or the man who says communicating hurts and I don't want to talk about it? I mean, you're going you're gonna to act out anyway. What you don't say rules you anyway. How are you going to be in a relationship and not communicate? 
Because if I'm thinking I'm not happy right now, or I'm thinking, you know what? I'm feeling insecure in where I am. You just got a big old raise. You're making two hundred thousand dollars more than me, mm. and we can't have that comment. You don't, you don't think that's gonna play out? And then it plays out, and then afterwards you're gonna be like, "Why are you acting that way? You know, I already messed up. Well, I was feeling insecure. Why not say it up front? Yeah. So you have to communicate because it's gonna be you know highs and lows, yeah. right? But you, but you ask uh, you ask something about being in the public eye, right? Yeah. So one, we feel like this is this is this is what we signed up for, but it also makes it tough. Because we can't have like bad weeks, right? Yeah. So there's this pressure because my personality is I'm very real. Yeah. If oh, we're you going are. through something, you're going to see it, yeah. right? My wife is cool in the other side of the pillow. You won't know anything is going on. She's right. a sales, so she's just chill like that, right? right? And so we still have to speak. And these are couples, there are a lot of couples out there that work together. Mm -hmm. Just because you fussing doesn't mean you're not going to be on. How many couples do you see in ministry? How many couples you still have to work? Y'all still have to do certain things together. Mm -hmm. So for us, we don't look at ourselves as this perfect couple. We look at ourselves as a couple that makes perfect adjustments. And oh, the pressure, come on. Let's stop right there. You said we not a perfect couple. Nah. We just make perfect adjustments. Right. Yeah, so we talk about yeah. it. So, so, so we have a rule. If we argue three times, we go see our own psychologist. So you all have a... Even Absolutely. Though you okay. like, shout out to your Dr. Kenny Felix. Wow. All right. That's I, mean, I shouldn't even give his name. He's already busy, <laughs> right? But what but what I'm saying is that right. if we argue three times, mm -hmm. why would we get to four? We know what that feels like. Right. We didn't already try to work it out. And it doesn't matter if I'm a psychologist in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm just husband. Right. And so we go in and say, hey, here are our perspectives. And so what it does is it gives us a certain level of responsibility. I think like pastors have to to live righteously. Right. Even that's a lot of pressure. It's like you have to believe in something. Yeah. Right. And so we're also very transparent. It's like, hey, here's what we went through. And here's how we overcame it. This is what we do. If yeah. anyone has ever speak, hear us speak, they'll be like, yeah, you know what? You know, we rock with y'all because y'all were real. Real about it. Y'all are real about it. And this is how we repair. And this is what you need to do. You know, I remember I wrote a marriage book. And the truth is, our marriage was just in a very, very tough spot. Mm -hmm. It was just like, I felt like the Lord was challenging me to write the good parts down and then give it to the world. And to be honest, a lot of it, a lot of it was premature. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just really, really overzealous. I believe, like, I remember walking in one day and I told her, we're going to write this book. And uh -huh. she was like, I ain't write no damn book. We don't even get along. You know what I mean? And I was just like, no, nah, there's some good parts about our relationship. You know, I'm just so... So gung ho, and I said, you know, I stepped out on faith to move to the to the city that I live in now, and God showed up. I stepped out on faith, and mm, God showed up. This is my first time, and I'm gonna step out on faith on us, and I just believe that God's gonna show up. And as beautiful as that sounds, like it didn't work out the way that mm -hmm. I thought it was going to work out. Have you ever found yourself at the intersection of, man, I just can't win this one? Have you seen couples? at the intersection of, man, this just ain't going to work. And have you ever just seen a couple and you just literally had to sit down with them both and say, hey, this shit's not going to work for y'all because y'all not going to ever get it. Do you ever get a chance yeah. to be that real about couples who just honestly, two people that are just, just are not yeah. compatible? Yeah, uh, I say that all the time and they get upset, right? But I didn't do that at first. I said, who am I to tell someone that they should go their separate way? Who am I? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, but when she came back in six months later, she says, you know what? We got a divorce. I said, yeah, I saw that coming. She said, really? I said, yeah, all the things that a happily <laughs> married couple needs, y'all yeah, had none of it. Yeah. Right. We were doing premarital. Right. And I kind of brought it up. But I said, you know what? God can do anything. Right. Yeah. And she says, you know what? I'm furious with you. I said, why? I mean, I thought you had been furious if I say, hey, I don't I don't see it happening. Like, who am I to say that? That's a little, you know, I'm, I'm a professional, but that seems a little, 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 harsh, yeah. little like, God-like, right? Yeah. Like, who am I to say that, right? He says, I came in to get your honest opinion about where we were. I don't need, I don't need you to do that. I need you to tell me what the red flags are. And then we decide if we want to proceed. Yeah. So from that, that time forward, I always say, all right? And here's what I say. I said, look, God can do anything. But looking at it, y'all have an uphill battle and y'all probably not going to make it to marriage. You're probably not going to stay together. Mm. And, all right. Sometimes I do that to bond them together because then I become the enemy. Right. This guy said, and they be like, why, how you figure? I said, all right, one, y'all don't have mutual satisfaction. All right. One of you is happy at a nine. The other is happy at a two. Y'all don't want to make that adjustment. That's not going to work long time. You try to ho hold on to it. 
But it's only a matter of time before the other, the two wakes up and says, nah, I was just being too nice. I was figuring potential would come around. Two, y'all not equally invested. One of y'all is working on the marriage. The other one's having to beg the other one to come to counseling. Mm. All right. Already, y'all supposed to both be into this thing already. And then three, someone else could love you better than y'all love each other. Dang. All right. It's going to be real. You could love yourself better than argue. Y'all argue all the time. You better off by yourself with the arguing. That's going to eventually happen. I've been doing this for 25 years. And so the reason I'm telling y'all this is so that you can see what's getting ready to happen and y'all come in and y'all present a plan as to how this is not going to happen. Because every couple can handle a couple of disagreements, but when those disagreements get to a critical point, it's like plaque to a tooth. It's just gone. Dang. And you just wake up. But, but when you look back at it, y'all were arguing. Y'all have three good days, argue on the fourth. When y'all argue, a, a, a predictable pattern of not talking for three days. Right. And then after the three days, when y'all come back three more days, y'all get into an argument, not talk for three days. Y'all are not getting better at your conflict resolution. So guess what's going to happen after two years? Hmm. One of y'all is going to say, I'm tired of going through the same. It's cumulative. See, it's not the same old argument. It's cumulative. Willie, you, you've been married. You ever been in an argument and y'all ain't even start arguing yet? Yes. Hey, we need to talk about what? See, yes. there you go with the attitude. That's why I don't want to talk. I, I, I don't want to talk as soon as I come in the house. The reason I come in the house is because all you're going to do is run and go upstairs. All you do is run. Okay, that's why I don't want to talk to you because everything out your mouth is nasty. Well, at least someone has to talk. Someone has to be the communicator in here. See, now you're being disrespectful. That's not disrespectful. That's just being true. We ain't even gotten to the issue. <laughs> right? But that's what happens when you're tired of arguing with somebody. Hey, I, just, I was like... Damn it. I've been there before. <laughs> God, dog. Oh, we all, we all, we all been drunk. And, and then I'm lost by then because I'm pissed. And I was like, now what the hell was I going in? <laughs> it, like one time I just came in with my cliff notes. I was like, I know we finna argue and I'm gonna forget what I'm talking about. So I pulled my notebook out. I'm just like, I figured we was going there, but let's get back to what I wanted to really <laughs> say. I had to do it like I do radio, man. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's not to say that some great times weren't had, but boy, when it's come to conflict. Like now, I'm going to be honest with you, Dr. Toy. I can't do nothing spicy. I don't even like spicy chicken no more. Give me all mild. I just want a mild manner, good. And, and like, honestly, the relationship with Jesus is so much more important now. Like what God is telling me, and not to make it about myself, but he's telling me that there's something that he's going to do with me that will require a woman whose relationship with God is either the same or stronger. Like I have to, I'm going to have to lean on her faith because there will be some times in my life that I have to be militant about subjects that she's going to have to seek Holy Spirit on to keep me in the vein because I'm going to want to go back to Berkeley. And I'm going to want to go back to the neighborhood. And I say that's what you've done for me on many occasions as you and I sat down because I remember one time and just dropping the fourth wall that I was like, man, you know, they called me something. And you mm -hmm. were like, why, did, why does that bother you? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know why it bothers me. Men aren't supposed to do that. You know what I mean? And I just appreciate what you bring to the table as it pertains to being real, raw, relevant, and true. And I appreciate the information that you were able to give us today, man. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. No, that's real. And that's then, real. Let, me, let me add this real quick. Yeah. So, you know, you asked me about, um, and you brought it up right now, you asked me about like a critical point where I knew I wanted to be with Mecca, yeah. right? So I had been through a relationship where it was super, super toxic, right? Mm -hmm. And you know how when you meet the right person, you're ready for them to reveal the ugly side? Yes. All right. So I'm talking to her. We get to she said we need to talk, and we go into the kitchen, and 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 uh, she say I I have a problem. We need to discuss. And I cross my arms. So here it comes. I knew she was too good to be true. You know what? Come on, man. Let's come on with it. You can't hurt a feeling I don't have. I'm already I'm already <laughs> disappearing. I'm not gonna respond. You can't hurt a feeling I don't have. I'm already not caring about anything you're saying yeah. right now. Let me go ahead. Go ahead and do what you do so I don't respond. Right. And and she was talking about how she feel. And then when she was done, she says, uh, that's it. I said, that's it? That's as mad as you get? I said, that ain't nothing. <laughs> that ain't nothing. I, I can do everything you say. That's as mad as she went in to give me a hug, Willie. And yeah. when she hugged me, I thought it was fake. I was like, she hugging me? <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, girl, you can be with me. Uh, that, you're going to be mine forever. Yeah. If that's how you express that you want me to change, 
I can deal with that because I was I was I was used to the AK forty seven. Yeah, wow, shoot, that's as mad as you get. That was it. Was that like average or high? And she was like, Yeah, I just usually don't get that mad. That's a good one. That ain't even mad, no. baby. That was appropriate. Yeah, you ain't called me a nigga or nothing. Praise <laughs> be to God. I love it. You know, and, and you know, I think that's a beautiful place to put a ball on here. Um, you know, I remember Dr. Dr. Uh, Dollar, Creflo Dollar, he said, man, listen, you need to see that person that you're dating with in all seasons of life, right? Got to see him when he broke, got to see her when she broke, when she up, when she down, when he up, when he's down. And then you got to see when he or she is angry to make sure that level of anger is something that you can actually deal with. Everybody look good when they looking good, but in the tough times, there's another part of us that we all wrestle with and fight with. There's a monster living on the inside of us that we have to fight with that we call our flesh. But once you get an opportunity to see that in somebody, you can say, okay, cool. I can see now that I can handle your anger, your love, your happy, your sad, your confusion, and I can help you navigate through that. Most of us, I can be honest, a lot of us, we don't do that, especially men. A lot of time, if she got that big old booty or is she fine and she cute, man, you ready to just go for it all. But I wanna challenge my men who are listening today to dive a little deeper, man. Think a little more about what your future looks like. I challenge every person under the sound of my voice to find out what your purpose is. Find out what you are called to do. Find out what you believe God is challenging you to do and essentially find someone who compliments and helps that vision. And, or if you say Willie Mo Jr., listen, I just go to work. I don't have a vision, but maybe there's something that you can enhance and help that woman through because she may have a good vision. I often look at my brother, Dave Myers, who's married to one of the most amazing women that I ever had the opportunity to work with and for, um, you know, um, uh, Joyce Meyer, and getting an opportunity to see how Dave serves her, but he's yet a strong man. He honors her, but he also honors himself. Guys, relationships are very, very unique, and there's so many different ebbs and flows. But I just believe by faith that with the information that you receive today, you're going to do better at it, and you're not going to lose yourself. I believe that you're going to love yourself more. All right, family, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. To those of you who want to take a deeper dive with what we do, you can be a LYM producer. You say, Willie Mo Jr., what is that? That's a Love You More producer, aka our Patreon, where we'll be sharing behind the scenes footage. You'll get an opportunity to go live with some of our guests. And of course, coming up here soon, depending on when you watch this, there are going to be some live opportunities that only the Patreon, the Love You More producers, are going to get an opportunity to be a part of to ask questions. So you want to do that. All of it is in the description in this video share like comment you got it and become a part of our community can't wait to see you next week flat out oh hate to stop you change the scenery and the energy but you ain't been obedient you know how i know because you ain't subscribed you ain't left no comment you ain't shared this with nobody do it right now now back to the show I, now do it good Back to the show. Flat out. And it is a wrap. Thank you for watching the Love You More show. I'm so humbled by it. Do me a favor. Hit that little notification bell so you can be informed whenever we do some updates right here on this show. Hit subscribe. Leave a comment. I'm going to read every single com comment, good or bad, right? Because I believe a good conversation is necessary in order for us to move forward. Thank you for watching the Love You More show. Hey, Stone, come on in. I'm tell sorry. Him, just tell him thank you. <laughs> tell him thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he don't no, even know what he's thank you for, come but on. thank you for watching the show. Flat out. Love you more. Love you more.